This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the simplest and most beautiful way to build a website today. Hi there, it's Trenna from John's Furniture Repair and I'm in the shop today with this really beautiful Dealcraft and Heinrich set of modern furniture. This is the table and the five chairs that we'll be concentrating on in this video. There are some other pieces, um, but we've got a full restoration on our hands here of this really beautiful furniture that is my personal style. So we're going to be recovering chairs with fabric with uh, courtesy of my mom and refinishing everything, giving everything a repair of total look over and just refreshing it for the next 35 years plus. So let me show you some details on this. So we've got a set of six chairs. One is taken apart here. You can see the frame really nicely done uh, in terms of modern pieces that I've seen. A really hefty corner block and the construction is looking really, really good. It does need a few repairs. It's an older set. My client has uh, inherited this over a few generations. So um, these are all in pretty good shape, but there are a few loose joints and the um, fabric is ready to be replaced with a new choice, which we'll show you later on. And the table here, uh, this finish is definitely deteriorated. It's starting to soften up and uh, imprint with stuff that's sitting on it. It's got a lot of scratches, a lot of wear, but in terms of the actual table itself, it's in really good condition. Just need to get a new protective coating on it. A couple of the legs need some work, but if you can believe it, this table stands on four post legs. It's quite a big table, but it does it really well with solid oak runners. So. Basically what we're gonna do is just get this all taken apart, which is very easy, strip it down, and let's make it beautiful again. Okay, so I've got the first chair on the table here, and there's been some repairs done before on these chairs. You can see there's an addition of a screw, which didn't really help what's going on here. Another similar situation right here. Um, on the backs of these two back legs, there's only supposed to be two plugs, but it looks like they've added an additional screw here and an additional plug. So not really looking that great. We're gonna get these apart and repair them properly so that um, it's got the look that it needs to. So uh, I'm just gonna basically pop these plugs out here and hopefully get all these screws out easily. So we're going to be checking all these dowels. They need to be tightly glued into the opposite side. And you can see the difference in color as I turn this around. So we want to get rid of this really dark red, get more into this area here. Okay, so I've got it all sanded up. This is a oil finish, so we're not going to be stripping the chairs because um, there's actually no point in using a chemical stripper when you don't have a film finish. So this is the color that they're gonna come up to here. That's their natural tone. It's still got a lot of color. These are teak chairs, so there's gonna be a lot of dark color, but we've got that red out. If you can see, it's got more of that warm orangey tone. So that's gonna be our color, basically. Um, we're matching it to the table skirt but that's looking really beautiful. What would have been the original holes? I don't know, because these are right in between the two. Hmm. 
Which ones do you think are the originals? Okay, so I've got all the pieces on this chair repaired. This end was all split apart here where the screw went into. Uh, I just need to clean out some extra glue right here, but that's all sturdy now. Uh, same with this piece. There was some broken areas here. And uh, when we were looking at those backs, we were seeing some extra plugs here. So I'm going to be doing flush plugs on those. I also think the whole chair should have flush plugs. In the modern um, style of furniture, they just kind of look off to me. They look a little too colonial. And so I'm thinking I'm just going to opt for uh, flush plugging everything. The other thing is um, all these chairs have screws going to the corner blocks from the opposite side. And I just, they could be factory, but I just don't like how they look and they might have been added on after. The screws don't, aren't really period specific. So I'm thinking, because they're a newer type of deck screw, I really don't think they were original. So um, because the hole is there, I'm opting to leave them in, I'm taking them out to make sure everything's tight, but we're gonna just pop them back in. And instead of having them showing like this, we're gonna be doing a flush plug on the inside like that. So that when we do the finish, it all blends in and nobody can see a shiny screw underneath there. It's not like a, a totally bad way to attach the corner block, seeing as the corner block only has one attachment on each side but it's not like it's it's uh, not sturdy this way either. But that screw's okay. We'll put them back and just hide them in there. So I've got these drilled out for the plugs before we put everything back together here this way. And then I think I will actually be flush plugging everything. Um, I think that's the best way to do these chairs. It just looks to me like it's a little off. Uh, even the corner blocks especially look kind of weird with those flush plugs. I just don't think it matches the style. They're not anywhere else on the table or on the other piece, the, the buffet, so, which I'm keeping a secret from you guys because that's going to be a different video. So um, I'm ready to get this glued up, so we're just going to uh, clean out that joint and get this first one glued up. Okay, so I'm on my second chair here, um, just looking at everything and just kind of realizing a couple things about what's happened to these chairs, <coughs> excuse me, in their life here. And I have come to the conclusion that these big screw holes that he's put mushroom plugs in a while ago are not original. Case in point, this piece right here, you can see a lot of glue's been squished actually right over the end grain of these old dowels that have been broken before. And this screw right here goes right through a dowel joint. Um, I There is three large uh, 9 16 dowels that go into these um, back posts and there's no reason to add two ginormous screws. And they are ginormous. They are like quite long three inch number 10 screws. So uh, we will not be putting these back in. It's really compromising the joint, um, and it's a good hefty joint. Like three dowels is overkill for a joint, but uh, in, a, in a modern chair, it works pretty well. These are built nicely. We don't need to add all this hardware. So we'll be, just be uh, flush plugging those holes and not putting, putting those back in, replacing the broken dowels as well. These are just going to be... I'm going to put the screw back in these ones because I actually kind of agree with this screw um, and then flush plugging those as well. And then these guys here are original corner blocks with screws because so those will go back in, but I'm not doing a mushroom plug on these. We'll just do a flush plug as well. So just streamline it back to the way it's supposed to be. Um, never should have had that much hardware installed. Doesn't need it. So we'll be removing all those and repairing all the joints. This will be a much stronger repair than sticking a couple of screws in. Screws are never a good idea, unless they're where they're supposed to be. There are a lot of complex and multifaceted aspects of restoration. You guys see that in my videos often. 
It may seem daunting to some, maybe like building a technologically sound and beautiful website might seem. It does to me, maybe to you too. But unlike needing years of experience to be a successful restorer, Squarespace makes it possible for anyone in need of a website, portfolio, or blog to access complex code without understanding it, thank goodness, such as adding e-commerce like an online store. This can be a really difficult task for a non-technological person. Squarespace lays it out step-by-step step and makes you look professional and organized with a few clicks. Add your product, images, and description, and your store is off and running. This is way more complicated from scratch, believe me. So now that you have a beautiful store, how do you tell everyone? Squarespace also makes it easy to create an online newsletter as well as many other assets like social media connections, emailing lists, campaigns, and so much more. If this is something you have been looking for, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you are all set to go, go to squarespace.com slash John's Furniture Repair and go ahead and save 10% off your first purchase of website or domain. So I'm just working on chair number four here and I just wanted to kind of show you, it looks like it was like a painted on gel stain over top of this beautiful teak. Like that's really quite sad. looks really bad there. And uh, I've decided to do a couple of things um, because I want to go with flush plugs. I want to do it everywhere. So I've been uh, increasing these holes to five eighths as well as the back posts were so damaged that um, I had to increase the plug hole to 5 eighths as well just to cover all of the damage. These guys, I can get away with a 3 eighths plug on those ones, keeping it smaller and better. So these I've just got all cut out of a nice piece of teak so I can just pop them in anywhere. Uh, it's going pretty well. Uh, they'll disappear when the repair comes in. So we've got our plugs on the back posts as well as on those screw holes that used to be in there. These screws are still in here. These ones are not going into the back of the chair. So they're turning out pretty good, but it always takes a lot of extra time to do flush plugs. Um, but it looks so much better. So these ones will be a little bit tricky because I have to attach the upholstered seat before I can finish these plugs. So those ones I'll have to do some hand finishing on. But yeah, everything's going pretty well. I haven't been running into too many bad repairs. Um, just, you know, some glue that's slobbered and obviously the bad finish. But uh, in terms of what shape these are in, most of them are okay. Um, but they are, they are taking me a lot longer than uh, I would have thought they would have. The repairs that were put in were kind of um, adding a lot of damage to some of these joints. But it's going well. So we'll just continue on sanding off this finish and getting everything cleaned up.
Okay, so I'm standing the last chair here, uh, and I just wanted to show you how uneven the last finish really was and how um, it's going to look when we're done with it. So if you look just here, look at the difference of like just a dry area. I think this is some old finish that was left on right there. And then it looks like their tinted finish here that they've added color. So the natural teak right here, this is where we've sanded, is going to look so much more vibrant and clear. Let me just put a little bit of some uh, Varsol on here. So yeah, there's uh, our clear um, right to the wood natural teak right there compared to their tinted finish, which has kind of a reddish, darkish reddish tinge on a lot of areas. But I think that color right there is gonna be really beautiful and we're matching it to the table. So the table skirt has the color that they want. And I think that's pretty darn close. Let's go take a look. If we can see it all down here to that natural teak color. Hard to tell, but I think we're we're pretty much there. My teak um, buttons here are really not coloring up like this teak, so I'm wondering, I'll probably have to do some color work on those, but they are teak plugs, they're just not the same type of teak. So, we'll finish sanding up this last chair. Uh, it did have a few more screws in it than the other ones. Um, this piece here had two screws going right into a broken section here. Uh, so we took those out and made sure it was sturdy and filled the holes. So lots and lots and lots of plugs on these. I've just been going through all these plugs that I've been making like nuts. So finish this last one up and then we're onto the table. Alrighty, so uh, my upholster has informed me that we have one very broken seat here for the chairs. Looking pretty nasty. Looks like someone tried to fix it before, but it's unsalvageable. So we're going to make a new one. So the way I do that is making a couple of forms um, that fit the curve of the seat itself. Three, at least three for a seat this size. So you can just kind of see it's it's fitting the curve there all the way to the end so we can flare that edge up. And I just take a piece of plywood here because it's good and rigid and draw a scribe line, cut it out on the bandsaw, give it a sand, make sure it fits and you're good. So then we're just gonna take these guys, transfer them over to uh, a couple of sheets here. I've got a quarter inch sheet and an eighth inch sheet that we're gonna be laminating together. So basically these will sit on three sections here to get it all um, bent evenly. Sorry, I just dropped it on my foot. And uh, clamps will go on either side and flare those edges up and create that nice curve. So I'm just gonna get the glue rolling in between. I'm just gonna use Tight Bond Original for this and uh, get 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 these two in clamps obviously this edge is not finished but we'll do that afterwards
got these legs stripped for the table. They are really beat up. Some of them have some pretty big gouges. I think it was, well, lots of stuff like this, where there's just really, really big dents. And then one of the legs had a big gouge out from it. So we're gonna be really heavily sanding these back. I believe they are teak, but uh, they've been through the ringer, these guys. Okay, so these legs are actually not teak. Just kidding, they're birch, just like my dad said. So I'm gonna do a two-step uh, stain to get them to look like teak. First, we're gonna apply teak stain by Gaudi, and then we're gonna apply rosewood by Gaudi. Okay, so I just finished sanding this with 120 with the sander and we've got all these little dents that are still in the veneer. Lots of them here where people would have sat, uh, but they're all over the piece. And so to minimize sanding, I use steaming. So basically just a wet cloth with an iron. And I just keep a bucket here to re-wet a cloth not drenching wet just about like that with a, a gentle squeeze out and then you just kind of lay your wet cloth on your wood and you can do this if it was a solid top i would just iron straight on the top um, but we're just really trying to minimize sanding so we'll be very gentle here and then you've got that soaking in you can add a little bit more water with a spray bottle. And then I've got my iron on pretty high. It's not plugged in right now, so I have to plug it in, but I usually have it on pretty high. And you just keep it moving, you know, maybe like five, six seconds, depending on your iron, just so it's a little bit dried out. Move it, move it, move it across the whole table. And that's really gonna lift those little dents everywhere. And then we'll come after and sand with 180. And, uh, because we're going with a pretty natural finish on this. We'll go up to 220 because we're not looking for any stain um, color absorption. So I usually stop at 180 just so I can get my stain to penetrate and grab onto extra fibers. But because we're not, we'll just go with the 220. The lacquer will have sufficient um, adhesion there. So I'll just do that whole top. And the other side I already did, so we had a couple dents that we have to sand out here. There was a big one here that we were able to lift all the way and a bunch of little ones. So this top needs a 180 sand. It's ready for that. Alrighty, so all prepped and ready for finish. Got it in the booth with two leaves in and the legs over here that we stained because they're birch. So I'm gonna throw a satin lacquer on everything. That's what the customer prefers. And I think we're gonna be pretty much good with the original color. Um, I'll check it with the sample afterwards, but you're gonna be watching as the lacquer goes on this beautiful teak, it's gonna pop. So enjoy.
Alrighty, so we've got three or four coats on the chairs and we've got to finish up these last flush plugs. We've done flush plugs on the whole chair, gotten rid of so much shrapnel. So they are back to the original condition and the original way that they were put together. So our last plug we're gonna to have to put in with this um, chair back. You'll see our lovely upholster here that my mom's put together. Our little sneak peek for you. So we're just gonna be popping in our oversized plugs. We had to make them oversized because the holes had quite a bit of damage. So this is just gonna cover all that damage. I'm gonna to try to line up as best I can with the grains in the plug to the chair. Use a less grainy one on this side because it doesn't have much grain. going to carefully knock off the extra. And there's always one way that takes off big chunks and the other way you shave it nicely. So obviously I'll have to be taping off this area to finish these plugs. So once we got them all flushed and sanded, there'll probably be a little bit of putty in the gap. There's always a seam. I'll probably just do a wax fill on that so we don't have to wait for that to dry. And then I could probably just paint in some lacquer, but we'll see what I do here. That might be the best option. I don't have to tape off the chair seats. So just carefully get that nicely rounded to the back post as much as I can. That looks good. And then I'll take some 180, do a little sand. Now this is quite dark teak and it has quite a bit of red in it and the plugs that I'm using don't have that much. It's a different type of teak. I'll just show you here. It's not a bad match, but the, you can see it's kind of missing that deep red that this teak has. So what I'll do is do a wax fill on this and do some colored touch-ups. So we'll get all those plugs in and get over back to the booth for final details. Okay, there it is, all finished up, looking absolutely beautiful. My mom's upholstery is working nicely with the chairs. These beautiful teak chairs have so much going on in the green. There's one that I really liked that I'll show you. But you can just see that beautiful grain popping now. We've got that opaque finish off. And the table is shining so beautifully. Amazing that a table this big sits on four legs, just like that, but I love it. So yeah, we did quite a bit of work to everything, especially the chairs. They had a lot of stuff going on with all of the additional hardware and the mushroom plugs that I did not like. So you can see our flush plugs here here and then as well under where they had the screws and the corner blocks. So really cleans up the profile of the chairs and kind of gives them back their really clean mid-century modern look. So that's much better in my opinion. But yeah, thanks for joining me on this one, guys. Um, this is actually one of our last jobs in this shop. If you'll notice, it's looking a little bit sparse on the walls. Workbench is completely gone here. Mezzanine used to be here, that's gone. My dad's still here, so that's good. <laughs> and yeah, so we're getting ready to move next week to uh, a temporary space at my house as we build or try to build our new shop on our property. 
So I'm gonna keep you guys updated on that whole thing because it's been a long time since I've given you any types of updates. But thanks again for joining me on this video and I hope you enjoyed the restoration of this mid-century set and there's more of this set to come. Uh, and if you want to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below this video. And as always, thanks so much for joining me. Cheers.